everyone, I'm from Start Chapter Toronto, even though right now I'm in Vancouver. And this presentation is going to be on where did that monarch butterfly go? So hi, my name's Ryda Alam. I'm a second year university student who loves STEM and the environment. I also love butterflies, which is why I'm so excited to learn about monarch butterflies today with you guys. So today's agenda, the lesson will be on monarch butterflies and we'll be having an activity today too. We'll have a material check, a safety check, and then we'll be making our own butterfly. So we're going to begin with the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. So as you can see, it's a life cycle. So it starts at one place and it moves to another and it repeats over and over like a pattern. First, we start with the egg. Then this hatches into a caterpillar, also known as a larva stage. This larva stage then goes to the pupa stage, also known as a chrysalis. And then finally, it emerges as a butterfly, the adult stage. Starting with the monarch butterfly eggs. So one female can lay hundreds of eggs. These eggs are really, 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 really small. And they're only about one millimeter. Can you see how small it is compared to that needle? female monarch butterfly only lays one at a time but she can lay many over a day and can lay eggs for her whole lifespan and then these lay eggs must be laid on milkweed plants otherwise they won't survive next we have the caterpillar also called the larva stage so the caterpillar's job is to eat and eat and eat and eat the caterpillar first feeds on the shell of the egg it actually came out of and as and then it moves on to eating milkweed plants as the larva or caterpillar feeds on milkweed it also sheds its skin a few times the last time it does so it attaches itself to a twig or a branch and forms a protective covering then we get the chrysalis stage also called the pupa stage the caterpillar has shed its skin and now its body is going to change. In, and this caterpillar undergoes something called metamorphosis during the chrysalis stage. So inside, the colors of the butterfly are actually forming and developing. And what was once a caterpillar is now going to make all the parts of a butterfly, like wings and antennae and legs. Then it emerges as a monarch butterfly, its final stage, the adult stage. And unlike the caterpillar, it can feed on nectar from any plant it chooses. Because as we can recall, the caterpillar can only feed on milkweed. The monarch butterfly is free to get nectar from anywhere it chooses to. And you'll notice something. It has a very distinct orange and black pattern with some white and what this does is it actually helps to protect the butterfly. Its bright orange color tells predators that it tastes icky. <laughs> and that's very good for it because it does not want to be eaten. Next, we'll move on to monarch butterflies and their habitat. So where do monarch butterflies live? So the monarch butterflies, their habitats are open fields, meadows, milkweed plants, and flowers. Like I mentioned earlier, the caterpillars must live on milkweed plants. That's why they often are in meadows, large meadows with lots of milkweed plants. But the butterflies can live in many places, any place that they can get nectar. In Canada, where I am, they're mostly in Southern Ontario and Quebec. So what is affecting their habitat? Deforestation and climate change. Well, deforestation means removing trees and forests. If you got rid of the plants, where can they stay? Where will the butterflies stay? And what will they feed on? Pesticides can also damage their home. If somebody put something gross on your food, you probably wouldn't want to eat it and you probably wouldn't be able to stay there either. Bad weather can also ruin their homes and also hurt them. So how does climate change affect monarch butterflies? Well, they rely on things like the environment and temperature to do many things like migration and even reproduction. 
Climate change also disrupts the migration pattern of monarch butterflies, and because it's occurring so quickly, butterflies will have trouble adjusting to different migration patterns. Now, let's move on to the great monarch butterfly migration. So, all these butterflies, millions of butterflies from the US and Canada travel all the way to Mexico, but they never return. So where do they go? Well, actually, once it gets too cold where they used to live, they fly all the way to Mexico where the temperature is perfect and they huddle up in these trees all together. It's not too hot and it's not too cold. The trees that they stay in are called oyamel fir, also known as sacred fir. So how do they get back? Well, it takes four to five generations to actually get back and it takes eight months to travel to Mexico. Say there's a butterfly in Canada. This butterfly will be able to travel the eight months all the way to get to Mexico. But one butterfly won't be able to travel back all the way to Canada. It takes five generations, and that means five times going through the whole life cycle again to get all the way back to where they came from. So why migrate? Well, it could be that in the places that they live, there were lots and lots of parasites. And so that's why if they migrate, they'll be able to find a new place where they can actually have food and shelter and they won't have to worry about parasites. They also migrate because in the winter, let's say it gets too cold, they, need to, they won't be able to find as much milkweed, so they need to worry more about staying warm. So let's reflect. Why is milkweed important to the monarch butterfly? Well, there's several, several reasons why it's so important. When the monarch butterfly is just a caterpillar, what happens is it can only feed on milkweed. So the eggs have to be laid on milkweed and the caterpillars can only feed on milkweed. That means even if it's an adult butterfly, they often have to look for milkweed plants even if they can feed on nectar from any other plants because they'll have to lay their eggs on a milkweed plant. Another question, why is looking icky good for the butterfly? Like I said earlier, it's really good to not look so tasty because if you don't look yummy, no one's going to want to eat you. <laughs> so time to apply. Let's use what we learned about monarch butterflies in a chromatography butterfly craft we'll be making our own butterflies. So the materials that we need are a non-permanent marker, white coffee filters, cups of water, pipe cleaner, string, scissors, and a pencil. These are our safety rules and you have to follow these instructions very carefully. So don't eat or drink during the activity. Keep your hands and all materials away from your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears and any other people around you. Don't run, especially since we're using scissors. Make sure your shoelaces are tied. Don't throw materials to anyone else. Tie back your hair if you have long hair and keep electronics away from liquids and other heat sources. So now we're gonna be making our chromatography butterfly. So set down newspaper or any other material to cover and protect the table you're gonna be working on first. Take a marker, a black or brown marker would be most interesting, but you can choose any color you want. And then using one coffee filter, we're going to draw a thick circle in the center of the coffee filter. And we're going to make sure it's really thick. 
and make sure it's in the center of your coffee filter here. You should probably make it a little bit thicker than I did. But leave space in the middle. Next, we're gonna take our pencil and inside the circle, we're gonna write the name of the color that we used. So I use purple, so I'm gonna write purple in here. If you use black, you write black. If you use brown, you write brown, etc. for any other color. Then we fold the coffee filter in half, then in half again, then in half again, and over and over and over until it's a cone. Then we take our small glass of water, we open up our cone, and just until the tip of the cone is just touching the water, we put it in the glass. Don't dip the whole thing in, just make sure just the tip is touching. Make sure that the thick ring that you drew with your marker is not touching the water. Then leave your coffee filter inside the water and let it rest and watch what happens as the water moves up. After your water has reached the edge of the coffee filter, take it out and leave it to dry on your covered table. You'll notice that the color has slowly spread just as the water slowly spread upwards. Next, we're gonna take our pipe cleaner and cut it in half. Using your coffee filter, smush it in the middle like this. And then wrap your pipe cleaner around the middle. Shape your pipe cleaner into two little antennae and tie a string and then hang it. So let's reflect. Based on our experiment, what color would we use to make a butterfly that hides in a tree? There's a very good hint in the corner. So if we wanted to make a butterfly that hides in a tree, we could make one that's green. Why? Because then it would be able to camouflage in with the leaves. But you could also make a brown butterfly because then it would be able to hide with the bark of a tree. So where would a monarch butterfly blend in? That's really interesting. You might think that because it's so brightly colored, it won't be able to blend in anywhere. But you'll notice that in the fall, or if you're lucky, other times of the year, you'll see that monarch butterflies blend in with the leaves during the fall. When the leaves turn yellow, they start to blend in with them. So how can we try and help monarch butterflies? Like I mentioned before, milkweed plants are really important to monarch butterflies. I mean, they really need them to survive, especially the caterpillars since that's all they can feed on. The butterflies need them to lay their eggs on as well. So if you can plant a milkweed plant in your backyard, then that would be great. Or if you see any anywhere around you and somebody wants to cut them down, you could tell them why it's so important using what you learned here today. Thank you for coming and thank you for engaging. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. These are our contact informations at Start, in, at Start Science as well as you can, you can visit our webpage.